Hello and welcome to Caravan Salon Dusseldorf 2021. Yes, so we are back in Dusseldorf. We're back at Caravan Salon here rushing around on the first day to bring you everything that's new and exciting. First of all, this has caught my eye. Really attractive combination of a tab with IKEA, all color matched in yellow for those of you who don't want your caravan to be in white. That's really cool. Nothing really new, but let's go in the halls and see what is really new. So this is very interesting. We're in Hall 1, Canals Tabot, and we have the Canals E-Power Drive. Yep, this is a all-electric motorhome. Well, when I say all-electric, I mean mostly electric. It's a study, so it's a prototype. Uh, it's based on the Van TI 650 MEG. Uh, as you can see, it's a it's the center of attention <laughs> and it's locked <laughs> but the, it's got a range everyone wants to know what the range is the range is 90 kilometers so that's not a huge range on pure electric however it's a kind of hybrid even though they're steering away from calling it a hybrid because it has a generator on board and the generator powered by petrol then charges the battery if we can look under here they've nicely put us a mirror so we can see all the gubbins underneath the motorhome so the generator will then charge the battery uh, lithium-ion battery of course and that is also going to power the interior now we're not allowed to go inside oh and it's locked <laughs> See if I'm going through a window. So we're not allowed inside because it's a prototype. So, oh, it's Gladys Pew. So anyway, here is your charging socket, he says. So you've got the uh, usual EV kind of charging socket there. Uh, but like I say, folks, this is a study. This is a prototype. Um, it's locked, I can't go inside, I can't even tell you how you power the heating or the cooking or anything like this. But it's very interesting. It's certainly a lot more integrated than the last electric motorhome we looked at, but it's still a prototype. And like I say, even though it's advertised as an electric motorhome, it's a kind of hybrid because of that petrol generator that is there to increase the range when you've run out of your 90 kilometers. So what's that, 60 miles? Not a huge range, but it's a step in the right direction. Big thumbs up for Knaus Tabot. So here we are in Hall 5, the Hall of Dreams. And look at this, this is a new ultra luxury company, Dembel. Uh, these are brand new on the market. Absolute super, super duper luxury land yachts here. So the bad news is we're not going in one yet. Probably not in this video. Good news is I do have an appointment for later today. So I will probably be doing a video on Dembel just on its own. And uh, I think that's going to be something very, very, very special. So stay tuned to the channel, folks, and uh, we'll go in and have a look and see, see inside one of these. They look absolutely exquisite. You just got to look at the slide out and just the curves on the slide out. And oh, I think if you have one of these, you'd have a driver. Definitely. So this is something very exciting at the show. I just wonder how much it's going to be. I really do. So I'm looking forward to coming back later and filming this for you for the channel. Now this is exciting. What do you get if you cross? 
a Swift Base Camp with a Bailey Discovery, you get a Hobby Beachy. This is a really neat concept. There's a van as well, the Van 540. We've got three caravans in three different lengths. You've got the 360, the 420 and the 450. And they're literally just back to basics. But first of all, look at this stand. Now, isn't this stand an example of how to make caravanning and motorhoming attractive to new people? They've got the sand here, they've got the boardwalk. It really is selling the dream. So Hobby have done an amazing job here. So as I say, it's a cross between a Swift Base Camp and a Bailey Discovery. You've got the, the curved rear of the Bailey Discovery and then you've got the back door of the Swift Base Camp. We should go in, this looks like the 360. So let's go in and see what the beachy is like. So we've got a fly, fly nets here. And already I like those because they're not those nasty sort of cheap things that, that easily break. The first thing I notice is there's no cooker. We have a, and a storage is these sort of elasticy things. We've got a single tap. How does this work? Am I, oh, am I failing an intelligence test? Oh, I see, this is a big, so this is a pull out call box. So this really is back to basics and it's all the better for it, I think. You'd probably get your little gas cooker. So you've got a porta potty in there, not even a cassette. Um, and this doubles as your wardrobe in here. And then go around looky at the lounge which gives you sort of a futon style now this is a three berth don't ask me how the third berth comes up i'm guessing that is a bunk maybe uh, information is very scarce i'm afraid which is more the pity um, it's a shame there's sort of nobody on the stand to sort of explain it to us but there you go um usbs here so that is really good really really impressed with that we've got the 450 here we've got the 450 here it's going through the back so we've got a larger dinette in the 450 still no cooker and you've got all this storage space up here so again it's pretty swift base camp-esque Um, if I show you what the front looks like, so got this box on the front. Someone's already disturbed the sand. So this is just a storage chest because with no cooker inside, of course, there's no gas system. which again, keeps it very simple. There's no front window. Actually, if we look over here to the 420, you see this nice sort of tent canopy. That's okay. It's very busy here. Yeah, very busy. Very busy here. It's very busy here. <laughs> Crazy busy, because it's so popular. But yeah, this is the 450. So we've got lots of all this storage, lots and lots of storage. Basically, I think we all know the uh, the large Swedish furniture shop that we all go to to get our tea lights that uh, provides these little pull out drawers and things. So again, really neat touch. So it is really, really neat. This uh, I believe is a four berth. The, the 450 is a four berth. I'm guessing, but I'm purely guessing folks, that um, you get some sort of a bunk arrangement here. <laughs> That's the same as my duvet at home. I got it from a, a well-known Swedish company. 
Uh, got tie downs on the floor for your push bike. So you see you've got tie downs so you can get your bike in the floor. Again, this got these boxes here. So again, very swift base camp esque. But it's done very well. Uh, it's it's far more stripped out than a base camp. Uh, well, no cooker for a start, and no gas system. But I love I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm not saying I'd have one myself because I would want something like heating and things like that. But I think for a basic basic entry level van or for, for doing what it says on the tin, for taking it to the beach in warmer climbs. I mean, if, I'm not saying I'd want to take one of these back home to the Outer Hebrides, but I certainly want to take it down to uh, the Greek islands or something. Oh, well, that would be stunning, wouldn't it, to do a tour like that? Right, so, this is the crazy busy stand of the Hobby Beachy. Absolutely love it, absolutely love it. <laughs> Now this is something you don't see every day of the week. We've got a van conversion here. It's not on a Ducato. It's not on a Peugeot. It's not on a Ford. And it's not on a Mercedes. It's on an MAN chassis. So this is the Rocket Camper Mountain. Uh, you can see it's got this amazing sort of bronze luster to it all the kit on the roof but it's just really interesting it's just something a little bit different and I'm struggling folks to find you things that are different this year but it is really really good I will show you inside in just a moment okay we've got a clear run now so the price of this beauty is 83,750 euros but they do start a lot cheaper on the Ducato at a sort of 50, 60 odd. But you can see it's really interesting again we've got this sort of smaller dinette with the track to hold the third seat so rather than squishing people in you can have an optional travel seat here at the back. I'm sure we could have two. Yeah you've got two tracks there so you could have two travel seats if you want. It's also got a very interesting layout because we've got the kitchen here. Lovely, lovely finish to it. Can, does that lift up? Yep, so you've got your cooker there. Little pad there before you go over to the double bed at the back. Got some drawers here. Nice, nice finish. Really lovely. It's just something a little bit different, folks. And like I say, we're struggling to find things that are different this year. But I like this. I like this very much. So this is the Rocket Camper Mountain. Let's go next door and look at the... Uh, I think it's the Ducato version. The, the Rocket One. So we'll have a very quick look at the Rocket One, if we can get anywhere near it. Yes, we can. Hurrah, hurrah. So the Rocket One starts at 62,000 euro. And again, you can see we've got the track in the floor to put extra seats in. Suspended table there. So you've got no table leg to worry about. Got your shower head there. So yeah, there is a slight issue of no washroom. I would hope that you have room to put a porta potty somewhere. So I'm guessing this is where you put your. Yep, there you go. There's the loo in there. And then there's your shower head ready to take outside just there so again this is a this is a fine weather van i'm not sure i'd want to be taking this to the isle of lewis in october 
but I certainly want to be taking it to Crete in June. Oh yes, please. That would be super. So this is the Rocket One, 62,000 euro. Now this is something I've been wanting to clap my eyes on for a very long time. Finally, in the flesh, the Chausson X550. It's a six metre long motorhome that thinks it's a camper van. And it really is, it's, it might look quite traditional, but actually it's just really neat. Let's go and have a look inside. I've been wanting to look in one of these for a long time. So we have a lounge up front. Nice funky color scheme there. A parallel lounge. And then we turn around. We have the kitchen and the washroom at the back. It's got really nice design style, as you can see. That's a cupboard, that is. Uh, basic kitchen, two burner hob. And we go through to the washroom. So it's an end washroom toilet. Oh, you know what we haven't had in this video, folks? Hello. Sorry. Yes, I'm wearing a medical mask for anyone who hates masks, but that's a condition of entry. That's the way it is. I'm going to respect my hosts and do as they ask me to do. It's very stylish, isn't it? Really stylish. And then here we have a drop down bed. So you can make this a four berth by sandwiching two people into the downstairs bed and having two on the drop down bed. Now, I always wonder what's gonna happen if the electricity fails on a drop down bed. But I guess I must be on my own there because they're getting ever more popular. They really are. Let's take a quick look outside this little beauty. Oh, got the domestic, big domestic fridge freezer here. Sorry, missed off the fridge freezer. With the, uh, I mean, these clips. I don't know what these are all about, but. I think they're quite good at breaking these clips, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, let's have a quick look outside this little butte. Here we go, about 60,000 euro. So we're on the Ducato chassis. So we've been waiting a long time to see this in the flesh. And yeah, was it worth the wait? Well, I think for people who want a motorhome in a six meter package, four berth at that, I think this is pretty good. The Chausson X550. Here we are on the Fiat stand and I'm afraid I have nothing to show you but I have a little bit of news I found out from the very lovely people here on the stand at Fiat. You may notice that the Ducato we're looking at is just the bog standard Ducato we've seen a million times before. They do not have the e-Ducato, the electric Ducato, on show. Now, apparently, the e-Ducato is now on the market. It's available to manufacturers, but so far, no mainstream manufacturer has actually decided to build a motorhome or do a full production van conversion on the e-Ducato. I'm told the problem is the range. The range of the e-Ducato with the larger battery is still 250 kilometers. Now, in the UK, we might think, well, that's okay. We only want to do sort of 100, 120 miles a day. But of course, in larger countries like Germany and France, such a range is not appealing to motor caravanners. And also, there is also the issue of charging en route and some chargers are hidden behind height barriers. So there is a lot of work to do, folks. There's a lot of work to do before we get to see mainstream manufacturers adopting electric vehicles. 
So that's the news from Fiat. Let's go and see what else we can find out. Now this is more like it. We can rely on our friends in France at Renault to give us a bit of glamour, a bit of design, pushing the limits and bringing something really interesting to Caravan Salon Dusseldorf 2021. This is a concept, this is the Hotel Hippie Caviar. And first of all, let's have a look. We've got the oldest effect here, 1977, that's been renovated. And then we have the concept vehicle here. There's still some guys working on filming, so we're trying to stay out of their way right now. So first of all, let's have a very quick look at this, uh, this estafette, because oh my word, they've renovated this something beautiful. Look at this. Pretty typical, eh, folks? I'm coming to uh, see what's new and exciting, and the first thing I, well, second thing I get really excited about after the, uh, the Hobby Beach is a 1977 Renault. Isn't it lovely? Oh, so lovely. But that's been brought in to juxtapose with this, which is the electric Renault traffic. Now to get over the whole range thing, what Renault have done is introduce this Hotel Hippie Caviar concept. And basically, it is a concept. So you imagine flying to Nice Airport, you, and this is, a, this is a mobile hotel room, so it's a virtual hotel. Here we have suite number 57. And you pick up your electric room on wheels, your rolling room. You go off and you go and explore, see some nature, and then when you're ready to camp up, camp up, pitch up, pitch up or camp, or camp it up, whatever you want to do. We're not judgmental here then you phone the concierge and the concierge will bring to you your mobile toilet and shower. I don't know if we can get in this. No. Can we go around the back? But also what's in here, now I think this is really is a concept, it's just a box. Uh, but also this has a huge battery in it, so you can power the power pack to your van. Sorry, your rolling, your rolling room. So now let's have a look at the rolling room, the electric Renault traffic. So, first of all, you'll notice they've kept the cab separate to the accommodation. Just because this is a room, this is not a camper van. This is a hotel room on wheels. And look at the different textures they've used. It's really cool. It is really cool. It's basically just a bed and a seat. And look at the, it's, but it's, oh my goodness. It is like a, a real uh, glamorous. It's glamorous, folks. Here's where you would call the concierge to come and deliver your toilet or when you're ready to eat. You order some food and the food apparently deliver, arrives by drone. So yeah, they would send the, the, your food out by drone. Of course, why wouldn't they? <laughs> this is fun, folks. I mean, who knows? Someone somewhere might take on the hotel hippie caviar. Upstairs, by the way, we have a sun deck. Look at that. So you can enjoy the view up there. Wowzers. It's just fun. It is just really good fun. So who knows folks, one day someone will start a franchise of the Hotel Hippie Caviar with electric rolling rooms, concierge service, food delivery by drone. Why not? Why not indeed? 
So here we have the past and the future, courtesy of Renault. Big thumbs up from me. Okay, so that's me back at the caravan and back on dog sitting duties. You see I've got Josie here and I've got Dougal being his usual animated self down here. That was a pretty quick first look at the show, had a quick walk round to see what caught my eye, what was innovating and interesting and exciting. And I have to say folks, I think it's a sign of the times that it wasn't the most exciting show that I've been to here at Caravan Salon Dusseldorf. Innovation seems a little bit thin on the ground this year and it could be just a sign of the times. All right, Josie, your mum and dad will be back soon. It could be just a sign of the times that the manufacturers are having a bit of a tough time just fulfilling orders. Uh, lead times of 12 months are now pretty common throughout Europe. Uh, so they're, they're really not focusing much on innovation right now. They're just focusing on getting product out the door to customers. And it does kind of show in the show today. Also, there were a few manufacturers missing. There was no, no Erwinheimer group again, which was a pity. But never mind, never mind, Josie. Hopefully, Erwinheimer will come back again next year. In the meantime, over the next few days, I'll be making some more videos, um, looking into certain models in more detail. So, some, there are some interesting things out there, not necessarily new, but we'll go and do, go back and film a few camper vans, a few motorhomes and a few caravans for you. So keep do subscribe to the channel and keep your eye out for those. Josie, they'll be back in a minute. Yes, they will. They'll be back in a minute. In the meantime, I would like to say a massive, massive thank you to the Caravan and Motorhome Club who have sponsored this video without interfering with the content. So they've made it possible and do check out the Caravan and Motorhome Club, CAMC.com. I'll leave a link in the description below for inspiration, travel inspiration, offers. They've got some great offers and also technical advice. So especially if you're new to the pastime, there are some great technical pages and also you've got the technical helpline. Come on, Josie. You've got the technical helpline that members can call up and help for matching your outfit. Oh, bye, Josie. And everything you wanted to know, but you were too frightened to ask. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, folks, you know what to do. Please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you don't already. Don't miss the rest of the Caravan Salon Dusseldorf videos. It just leaves me to say from Josie, from Dougal, and from me, thanks for turning in. Right, are you happy that you were left with your friends while we went, or would you like to come to the show next time? Hmm? What would you like to do? Hmm? So Josie, you're missing your mum and dad, and Dougal, you just never smile. Situation normal. Oh, <laughs> no,